This video is to help explain the starting sequence of a synchronous AC three-phase motor. This example uses a motor shaft mounted DC exciter generator with a control circuit using a polarized field frequency relay and an out-of-step relay. These relays help control the application of the DC excitation when the motor approaches and runs at synchronous speed. To review, a synchronous motor will only run at synchronous speed when a DC voltage is applied to the rotor circuit, creating an electromagnetic field. This electromagnet in the rotor of the motor will cause the motor to pull into synchronous speed and lock in step with the rotating mag magnetic field of the stator of the motor. If the DC field is overexcited the additional lines of flux created by the DC field will cause the motor to generate additional CEMF back on the line, creating a leading power factor. These motors are used in situations or loads like large piston compressor motors, when an industrial installation has a demand for compressed air, the motor provides the necessary horsepower to drive the load at unity power factor. When there is no longer a demand for the horsepower from the motor it is unloaded, and it continues to run with a leading power factor to compensate for the facility power factor. Please note. When a DC exciter generator is used to provide the DC for the rotor's magnetic field, one has to consider that when the motor's AC power is initially applied to the motor the shaft is at a standstill and the DC generator is not providing any DC power from its output. When the start button is pressed the CR1 control relay will become energized and all contacts associated with this will change state. This will energize motor starter M and its associated contacts will close. This provides three-phase power to the stator coils of the motor. The three-phase AC power is applied to the stator of the synchronous motor. A small amortisseur winding, a small damper winding that acts like a squirrel cage winding, will have a current induced into it, which acts like an induction motor, and the rotor will begin to rotate and speed up. While this is happening the DC rotor coils are being cut by the stator's rotating magnetic field. The rate at which the AC current is induced to the DC rotor field coils is at a high frequency when the rotor is rotating slower, and the frequency of the rotor circuit reduces as the motor approaches synchronous speed. The external rotor circuit needs further analysis to fully comprehend the operation of the synchronous motor starting circuit. Think about the rotor portion of this circuit as an AC source. Series inductor called the reactor and a series resistance called the discharge resistor. Also pay attention to the AC coil of the polarized field frequency relay connected in parallel with the reactor. When the AC stator field is inducing the higher frequency current from the stator to the rotor, the DC exciter generator is not spinning very fast and not producing any DC voltage to energize the field relay coil F. And it will not have enough power applied to pull in the relay. The normally open contacts F will remain open. Therefore this highlighted series circuit is the only current path that is current induced from the stator three-phase rotating AC field. Here a simplified circuit is shown on the right. The inductive reactance of the reactor at a higher frequency will be proportional to frequency. The higher rate of change of the higher frequency will create more CEMF in the reactor coil. The series resistance and reactor create a series RL circuit. The proportion of voltage developed by the induced current in the rotor circuit will be fairly high, since at this point the motor is experiencing inrush current, and a large magnetic field flux is cutting the rotor conductors. The high voltage developed across the reactor due to the higher inductive reactance will cause current to flow through the polarized field frequency relay. Energizing the AC coil of the PFFR. The DC ex exciter mounted on the shaft of the motor will begin turning and creating a DC voltage output. This will create current in the DC coil of the polarized field frequency relay. The induced current of the rotor energizing the AC coil of the polarized field frequency relay, plus the DC exciter mounted on the shaft of the motor, has begun turning and creating a DC output. The combined DC voltage across the polarized field frequency relay DC coil and the current induced into the AC coil will cause the polarized field frequency relay to pull in and the normally closed contact to open. As shown in figure 1 on the right. This will cause the F contactor to remain open as the DC exciter accelerates. No DC current will be applied to the motor's rotor at this time. As the motor accelerates closer to synchronous speed, the, the frequency of the rotor circuit induced current will be reduced. This lower frequency will change the inductive reactance of the reactor coil parallel with the polarized field frequency relay AC coil. 
the lower inductive reactance will cause less induced voltage dropped across the reactor, resulting in a lower current allowed through the polarized field frequency relay AC coil. In addition as the motor accelerates the amount of inrush current is reduced, resulting in a weaker flux field interacting with the rotor windings. The polarized field frequency relay will no longer have enough of a magnetic field from the AC coil to remain pulled in. The DC coil magnetic field will then also take over and saturate the core of the AC coil, and the normally closed PFFR contact will close. This is shown in figure 2 on the right. The closing of the PFFR contact will now energize the field relay coil F with DC voltage, and normally open contacts F will close, and the normally closed contact F will open. The closing of the F contacts will result in DC excitation voltage being applied to the rotor of the motor. The applied DC will cause the rotor electromagnetic field to lock in step with the rotating magnetic field of the stator and run at synchronous speed. One item to discuss about the starting of the synchronous motor is the situation that may occur where the motor does not develop enough torque while starting to get up to near synchronous speed. This may be due to the smaller amortisseur winding not creating enough torque or a load connected to the motor shaft that exceeds the available pull-up torque of the motor during starting. The out-of-step relay is added to the control circuit. It is similar to a magnetic overload dashpot relay. AC current will be present in the out-of-step relay coil that is in series with the discharge resistor and the reactor during the starting period. The armature of the out-of-step relay will try and pull in. The armature will be resisted by the dash pot oil in the container that is pushing against a piston. This will prevent the relay from immediately changing the state of the normally closed OSR contacts. If the motor takes too long to synchronize and lock in step with the rotating magnetic field, the out-of-step relay will continue to push the piston up as the dash pot oil flows through the orifice holes in the piston. When the oil is all displaced the armature shaft of the out-of-step relay will come in contact with the push rod and open the contacts that are in series with the control relay CR and stop the motor. This will protect the motor when it fails to start. In review, synchronous motors need the DC excitation applied when the motor is started and has accelerated to near synchronous speed. A polarized field frequency relay, PFFR, has an AC and DC coil this provides the ability to use the induced current in the rotor circuit to sense motor speed and apply the DC excitation to the rotor at the proper sequence of operation so it locks in step with the rotating magnetic field. An out-of-step relay is used to turn off the control circuit if a motor fails to start and lock in step with synchronous speed.